Hey guys, and welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're not new, then welcome back. It's great to have you back if you're a returning visitor, but if this is your first time, hi, how's it going? This is my channel where I try to have some fun and just kind of have a, like a chit chat about medical cannabis here in Florida just because it's fun for me and I like having kind of a community here. It's fun. So, so in today's video, you can probably tell from the title, but we are going to be talking about the new edibles rules in Florida. So if you don't know, some background is just recently on August the 26th, I believe of this year, Florida's Department of Health finally went ahead and issued some production standards that allow dispensaries or MMTCs in Florida to dispense and sell edibles. From a Canna MD article, the Florida Department of Health has officially issued production standards, meaning dispensary sales of marijuana edibles are now legal. But regarding those rules that were put into place, there are quite a few and it's a little bit restrictive, some would say. So let's go ahead and take a look at these rules. Basically, Florida said you can have edibles, but only a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell you exactly what they said. Here are some of the edibles rules that were laid out by the Florida Department of Health. Edibles shall be one of the following shapes, including the three-dimensional form of each shape. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep this calm and not laugh too much. Square, circle, rectangle, triangle, parallelogram, <laughs> oval, or diamond. <laughs> Lozenges, gelatins, baked goods, chocolates, drink powders, and with chocolates, okay, here, get this. Chocolates may not contain any caramel, nougat, nuts, fruit, honey, marshmallows, or any other such ingredient, toppings, or fillings. An MMTC shall not produce or dispense any edibles that contain any color additives, whether natural or artificial, contain or bear a reasonable resemblance to commercially available candy. For the purposes of this rule, a product bears a resemblance to a commercially available candy if the product is similar in appearance to an existing candy product that is familiar to the public as a widely distributed branded food product such that the edible could be mistaken for the branded product, especially by children. Edibles shall be produced in a manner to minimize color intensity and other visual and color characteristics attractive to children. And then something about the dosing is interesting. I think it said... So the rule I had been thinking of was that a single serving portion of an edible shall not exceed 10 milligrams of THC, and a multi-serving edible shall not exceed a total of 200 milligrams of THC. So here's my take on it. Basically, it kind of, like, I wanted to be excited about the edibles rules being released and edibles being sold by dispensaries, but... I don't want to, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and complain too much because the way things are right now, I can go and purchase several different things from a dispensary. I can even purchase distillate or some other concentrated cannabis oil that I'm able to consume orally. And I can mix that into my own recipe at home and make my own edibles pretty easily. And there's no rule that I'm aware of that's stopping me from doing that. So I can make my own edibles at home and make them as strong as I want. I can also add icing, I can add colorant, I can add anything I want. I currently have red gummy bears in my fridge that I made because I like to make my own edibles at home because I've been doing that since 2018 because we haven't been allowed to like buy edibles. And now, as we can all see, there are so many different rules surrounding edibles that they can only be certain types of edibles. It's kind of like nothing has changed almost, except for that now you can buy like a 10 milligram THC cookie, I guess is the big excitement. So it almost feels like more of a win for the dispensaries than for the patients. And I feel like whenever that happens, it's kind of like, Meh. so for the community, I guess, like just because the community of medical cannabis in Florida, like I guess the community is mostly patients and so we like things that happen and work in our favor, not just in the dispensary's favor. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm, ow, I just stabbed my trachea. But I definitely overthink these things, so that's why I have a YouTube channel about it. It's kind of just all, again, for fun, just like a way to spend time like making videos and stuff. So, and people like the videos, so we just keep it going here. I can say that I am actually currently utilizing I guess the new edible rules because I'm drinking a true powder drink. If you don't know what true powder is, it is a water soluble powder that has THC in it. This smudge on the side of the cup suspiciously looks like the letters THC, but I didn't do that. 
And this true powder is pretty cool. It does dissolve pretty well. It's not perfect, but it dissolves a lot better in carbonated beverages, I will say. And this one is the lemon flavor. So they were able to come out with the lemon and then the vanilla cream flavor of true powder, um, which is cool. So I think that's because of the new edible rules, but hey, I don't know everything. But I guess the other reason why it's not super exciting is we already had, like I just said, like we already had oral products available. So we could buy tinctures, we could buy, I even have like some infused olive oil that I bought from Trulieve and that's a Binsky product. Binsky is one of Trulieve's like external third-party brands that has coupled with Trulieve and made a couple of products through them or made several products together I guess at Trulieve. There's a lot of Binsky stuff at Trulieve. But anyway, so edibles, we were thinking that would be like, oh cool, we can get like, I don't know, infused candy, but it's like hardly because the candy that we will be able to get or can get now is it's colorless, which is like fine. I don't know. What do you guys think about the edible rules? Tell me in the comments below. I know a lot of us would be a lot happier right now if the change that we just saw was like home grow had passed or something because home grow is something that has been like notably absent from the cannabis rules in Florida. A lot of people, I think from what I gather, a lot of patients and people feel like if we're able to go and buy cannabis from a dispensary, even if it's cannabis flower, like why can't we grow our own at home? Because the law currently in Florida doesn't allow for growing cannabis at home. So there's no way for us to legally purchase seeds or clones or some way for us to start a plant at home. It's just interesting if anything, but it's also frustrating for those of us who kind of want to grow our own. I don't know. I would like to try it at least. <laughs> I have some sunflowers growing in my kitchen right now. Like I grow stuff in my house already, so why not cannabis? But because it's illegal is currently my answer. Um, but why is it illegal? If we can buy, if we can give our money to dispensaries to buy cannabis and cannabis is a plant, don't know what you were told, but cannabis is a plant that grows out of soil with water and light. It is a plant, my friend. And it's very sustainable in that sense. It can grow, you can propagate it into new plants. It can be very abundant and not that expensive or not cost you anything to cut a slice of a plant and grow it into a new plant. Then you can have like, you know, infinity pot plants <laughs> for zero dollars. It's just like, why, why is the government so afraid of just like letting us grow our own? Because quite frankly, I don't really have enough faith in myself to say that I would be able to grow a lot of cannabis. Like, I think I would be lucky if I got one plant to do its thing. Because from what I gather, it's not very easy to just grow a plant. It's not like with cannabis, it's not like you just plant it and it grows. I don't know. Maybe some people out there who are master growers have figure that out and they can just plant it and boom, boom, boom. But from what I gather, it's like a whole process. Um, it involves purchasing some lighting, some fans, potentially a dark room that you can use for the grow. Like it just, it requires a few different steps that I don't think everyone is going to go and take if that were legalized. So that's why I'm just like, why can't those of us who want to try it do it? Why do we have to keep, I don't know. So whatever, but I, I like a lot of the dispensary products out there, as you can probably tell from my channel, I've tried a freaking lot of different products from these dispensaries slash MMTCs. Um, so I appreciate the work that they do and I appreciate the products that I am able to purchase. But at the same time, I also feel like, why isn't home grow a thing? If we can buy it, why can't we grow it? Doesn't really make sense to me. But what do you think about all of this? Let me know in the comments, please. So edibles in Florida, it's pretty cool. I mean, again, it's exciting. I have a true powder drink I'm drinking right now. I also have some Cura Leaf sublingual tablets that in my opinion, bear a striking resemblance to sugar-free gummies that taste really good, by the way. They taste really yummy, like a yummy candy, <laughs> um, but they're sugar-free. So right now there are several options out there for people in Florida to consume cannabis in a lot of different ways. So that's kind of how I feel about the whole thing right now. It's sort of just like edibles, cool, but I'm not super over the moon about it because I kind of wish it were something more liberating and exciting, but whatever. <laughs> Parallelogram though, like what a word, what a shape and what a word. So 
Okay, guys, it was fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye!